Over Black Friday weekend, we're offering 22% off everything in the TLDR store, from our cute countries with shoes pins, including the US pin badge, to stickers and even our book, Brexit the Colouring Book. Get our biggest discounts of the year using code Black Friday. Hello and welcome to another TLDR Explains video. In this one, we're going to be looking at the prospect of American succession, what it means and why it's become more popular, and whether it could even actually happen. So we're doing this video because the idea that America should split up in some form or another has started gaining traction in some corners of the media. Various media outlets have floated the idea and there were even two books written on the subject in 2020. One by left-winger Richard Kreitner and one by right-winger F.H. Buckley. So what's got the media into the idea of American secession? Well, it's probably because the public are so into American secession. In the aftermath of two of the most polarising elections in American history, more and more Americans are flirting with the idea of secession. Polling from UVA's Centre for Politics found that an astounding 52% of Trump voters and 41% of Biden voters would favour states seceding from the Union to become their own separate country. That's a scarily high number, but before you get too stressed out or taking the notion of American secession too seriously, note that the question is ambiguous. It could mean one of two things. It could either refer to the idea of a state, say Hawaii, leaving the US and becoming its own mini country, or it could be referring to the idea of the US splitting up into two similar sized countries, presumably one composed of Democrat blue states and one composed of Republican red states. These are two very different ideas and we're going to address both in this video. Let's start with the idea of a single state leaving the US. Legally, this would probably require a constitutional amendment, with the support of two-thirds of the US House and Senate, as well as 38 state legislatures. This is, well, pretty much impossible, but there are nonetheless some state-specific secession movements, most notably in California and Texas. Yes, California, or Calexit, is a movement that supports the idea that California should leave America and form its own government. And to be fair, California has the resources to go it alone. California, just by itself, is the fifth largest economy in the world in terms of nominal GDP, ahead of Great Britain, France and even India. It has a high GDP per capita of about $65,160, according to 2019 estimates, which puts it ahead of the US average of about $63,000. Its major cities, such as San Francisco and Los Angeles, are globally recognised and California is home of major tech companies such as Apple, Google and Facebook. So, what do the residents of California think? Well, support for Calexit reached an all-time high of 32% in 2017 after the inauguration of Donald Trump, who isn't the most popular politician in the Golden State. But, according to the latest polling from 2018, it has since fallen to just 14% support, with 73% opposing. Texas is sort of California's red state equivalent when it comes to secession. Texas has been gaining a lot of political clout over the last couple of decades. It has large amounts of external immigration, mainly due to its proximity to the southern border, as well as internal immigration of Americans looking for a more pro-business, low-tax state government. Today, Dallas and Houston are some of America's biggest cities, housing the headquarters of major companies such as Dell, ExxonMobil and AT&T, with Tesla moving to Texas sometime in the near future as well. Texans are more pro-independence than Californians, Polling from Public Policy in 2016 found that 26% of Texans support secession, with that number rising to 40% if Hillary Clinton won the presidential election that year, which, as we all know, didn't happen. Nonetheless, after Biden's election in 2020, Texas Republican Party Chairman Alan West proposed that Texas and other like-minded states should leave the United States and form their own nation, and there was even a bill proposed in the Texas legislature that would have held a non-binding vote as to whether Texas should leave America, but it failed to pass the committee stage. In addition to California and Texas, there were some less well-known independent movements. The Cascadia movement seeks to unify the Pacific Northwestern states of Oregon, Washington and the Canadian province of British Columbia together as one nation. 
States outside the continental US, such as Hawaii and Alaska, have flirted with independence in the past. Alaska even elected a pro-independence governor. But these campaigns haven't really got off the ground. The long and short of it is that while independent states might occasionally flirt with independence, these are usually reactions to controversial political events, and support rarely holds. And even if it did, the appropriate constitutional amendment is unlikely to get through. One last thing to note is that if, for example, Texas decided to leave because it thought the rest of the US was becoming too liberal, or Democrat, this would end up being self-defeating. Texas leaving would mean 40 fewer electoral votes for Republicans. In 2020, Trump could have won Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, but without Texas, he still wouldn't have won. In other words, Texas leaving would hand the US to Democrats. Equally, California leaving would hand it to the Republicans. Anyway, what about the idea of the US splitting up into red America and a blue America? Well, we're not going to stay on this topic for very long because, well, it's not going to happen. The first thing to say is that there probably isn't a legal way of doing this. If getting one state to secede legally is difficult, getting half the country to do so is nearly impossible. Second, for all the talk of red and blue states, America is probably more politically mixed than you think. All states are ultimately a bit purple. There's an amazing stat which really illustrates how mixed America is. Most people who voted for Donald Trump in 2020 actually lived in blue states. Yep, so even if all the so-called red states left, they'd end up taking less than 50% of all Trump voters. You get the point. While it might occasionally feel like it, America isn't divided in the same way as it was in the 1860s, so there's no easy way for it to split. Finally, this would be the world's messiest divorce. Splitting up is always difficult, but especially so when the US federal government, the most powerful organisation on earth, with over a million employees, a massive nuclear arsenal, and the world's most powerful military, is on the table. So, all in all, secession of any kind is neither likely to happen anytime soon, nor a good idea. Nonetheless, the fact that secession has become even a topic of conversation is a symptom of the fact that Americans do feel increasingly divided. And, well, in some sense they are. Democrats and Republicans have never thought less of one another. So, even if secession isn't itself a real problem, it's a symptom of one. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, and if you want us to do a video on political polarisation in the United States, let us know in the comments below. Like I said at the start, if you use code Black Friday in our store this weekend, you'll get 22% off everything you order. You heard me, 22%. You can even get two signed copies of our book, Brexit the Colouring Book, for just $14.99 if you use the link below. Anyway, treat yourself and your TLDR loving friends by heading to the store, and by doing so, supporting our work. Thanks. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers for making videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description below.